please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's Thursday, October 26, 2017. I'm Julia, and on today's episode of HVTV, we'll be featuring the importance of language in Silicon Valley, what you hawks think of the Dutch goose, and a hawk squawk on what Disney princess you would be. Ready or not, HVTV starts now. First up, when you hear music, do you think of it as a new language? Here's Jack Liu with the new story of importance of language is of all type. So I am Nikki Boswick. I teach violin and piano, and I also play music. When you're talking about music and language, there are really two aspects. One is the language that you use to make decisions and coordinate your actions with your group. Um, there's an entire branch of philosophy that deals with music as a language. And some people say that um, music is a way to express yourself, it's a way to um, symbolize things, to evoke emotions, right? So if I play a really sad piece, I'm using the musical language to make you feel sad. The problem with that is you need a symbol and a symbolized in order to have a language, right? So I can't take my viola to the drive through window of McDonald's and order a cheeseburger. Most people, I guess, watch television at the end of the day and they go home and like read a book or watch TV or, you know, sort of turn their brains off a little bit. I would go home from working or going to school and I would spend two or three hours practicing the violin or the viola. Um, because I really wanted to do something. I didn't want to be turning my brain off and just sort of accepting my circumstances. Learning English is super, super important. Um, when I read somebody's email or text messages and they spell rect, R-E-K-T, immediately I sense that this person either doesn't care or doesn't know. And both things are bad. Thanks, Jack, for that story. On another note, here's another, another devilish story by Will and Henry about one of Menlo Park's most famous restaurants just a few blocks from Hillview. The Dutch Goose is a staple of Menlo Park and the best place to find friends, eat burgers, and have the best deviled eggs ever made since 1966. The current owner of the Dutch Goose is Greg Stern, a Bay Area native, Menlo Atherton alumni, and former student of Encinal School. The Dutch Goose is known for two things, the graffiti on its walls and its loyal customers. I like the people, I like the food, I like the atmosphere in general, and I luckily live down the street. Uh, just in general, everybody seems to be friends, and that's the best I could ask for. The Dutch Goose also has a special connection to Hillview. Mr. Ikemora was a PE teacher at Hillview for 15 years. Sadly, Mr. I lost his battle with cancer earlier this year, but his friends and family at the Dutch Goose still remember his warm personality. Ernie also was Greg's PE teacher at Ensignal, and later when working at the Dutch Goose, Greg became close friends with Ernie. The Dutch Goose may have an incredible community, but if you've heard anything about the Dutch Goose, it's about their food. 
The Dutch Goose is known for its large assortment of drinks, crispy bacon, perfectly browned beef, smoky tastes, and its large meal portions. However, one item on their menu stands out. Their signature deviled eggs are made with their own secret recipe and are to die for. However, if you're not into deviled eggs, they have burgers, pizzas, fries, and drinks to enjoy. You can even play a game pool or use arcade machines while you wait for your meal. So if you want a hot meal and a community to be a part of, head down to the Dutch Goose at 3567 Alameda de las Pugas. Reporting for HVTV, I'm Will Marsh along here with Henry Donald. Thanks Henry and Will for making us all hungry this morning. Now it's time for a short commercial break from Hill Hillview ASB. What's your favorite food ever? Probably sushi. Mac and cheese. Curry. Pasta. Shrimp tacos. What food do you dislike the most? Artichokes. One food that I don't like is probably sushi and avocados. What do you do when someone gives you food that you don't like? I say no thank you. I'll say no thank you. I usually just put it in my lunch bag and just never eat it and then throw it away later. I eat it. Try to eat it. Did you know that one of five kids don't have enough food? What? That actually really surprised me. Like, that's really sad. I don't know what to say to that. Can you turn the bag around? In the United States. That's concerning. It kind of makes you feel like weird because then you know that you can, that you throw away some food and then other people could have eaten that food. What do you think we can do about this? We can donate food and try and help other people. Learn not to waste food. Donating food. Thank you to the ASB Food Drive Committee for that important and valuable lesson about making a difference. Okay, it's that time again. Hawk Squawk, we asked Hillview students and staff, which Disney princess are you? It would be Rapunzel because I just want to have like an extra super long arm that I can do stuff with. Be Snow White because she has all those little dwarves with her so then they could like do stuff for her. Be Jasmine because I want to fly around the world on a magic carpet. she's like a warrior. Sleeping Beauty because who wouldn't want to sleep forever or for at least for a while? Not you? I don't know. Uh, Sleeping Beauty because sleep? Yeah. Good. Uh, Snow White. I'd be Sleeping Beauty so I could go and sleep all day and all night. Done. Okay. I would be the princess from Beauty and the Beast because I think beasts are rad and that yellow dress is righteous. I would be my mom. No! I would be Cinderella, obviously. Um, I'd be Cinderella because my name's Ella. I'm blonde. I'm Ella. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty! Cinderella, she's I love her glass slippers <laughs> and her mouses are like gods. Her mouses, her mouses. Her mouses. Elsa, because none of the other princesses have magic powers. Moana, because we don't get close, and no one knows. The Elsa, because she doesn't have to get married at the end. That's it for today's episode. Teachers, stay tuned for a very, very short special announcements on the PA.